A radio station transmits radio waves with a frequency of 96.1 megahertz. That's a key bit of information. So that's because it's megahertz, it's 96.1 times 10 to the power 6 hertz. Okay. Uh, then we're told a simple receiving area on a radio consists of a telescopic metal tube. So there we go. There's the aerial. So it's, much as it, it's basically a tube. And they're saying uh, that it has a length equal to a quarter of a wavelength. Now, to give you some idea what that is, uh, a full wavelength would be that. Okay, going up like that. So that is a... Uh, if this is a standing wave for example that would be from here to here that would be one wavelength and you're told that the aerial is basically a quarter of the length so about about here in fact is what it should be you're told also that the velocity v equals three times ten to the power eight so there's your v there v so we need to find out determine the length of the aerial so we're going to need to find out what the length of the wavelength is they've hidden the question by saying talk about the length of the aerial but they really want to know what the length of the wavelength is now to be honest i'm hoping that after a while you recognize well that's frequency and that's velocity so therefore this is a wave equation and that's what we've got here so you rearrange uh, the wave equation so you get v over f your velocity is three times ten to the power eight the frequency is uh, 96.1 times 10 to the power 6. And when you put that into the calculator, you get an answer. 3.121481. Now, the point is this, is that they've given you things to three significant figures. So we should only really quote it to three significant figures. So that's going to be uh, 3.12. But if you notice today... They've not asked you to uh, tell you uh, what the wavelength is. They want, you, they want you to know what a quarter of a wavelength is. So I need to get uh, the, a quarter of a wavelength. It's going to be lambda divided by 4. So that's going to be uh, 3.12 divided by 4. And if I do that now, I get the answer 0.78 meters. Right, the next one. Ultrasound waves have a wavelength of 0.44 so that is our wavelength again they've told us in millimeters so that is going to be equal to that's 0.44 and because it's milli it's times 10 to the minus 3. now i personally prefer to write down 4.4 times 10 to the minus 4 because it's slightly less than a millimeter and that just looks neater so the speed of ultrasound waves is at 1540 so this is your velocity so again, we've got velocity, we've got wavelength. This is clearly a question about the frequency. So we need to find out, yeah, there you go, there you go. Determine the frequency of ultrasound waves. F equals V over lambda, uh, 1540, divided by 4.4 .4 times 10 to the minus 4. And when you put this inside, you get the answer of 3.5 uh, megahertz that's wrong there 3.5 megahertz is the answer of the frequency uh, the next question says what is the advantage of using ultrasounds to uh, with a very short wavelength well the answer is a very short wavelength will reduce diffraction effects and increase the sharpness and resolution of the ultrasound image Basically, if your wavelength is roughly equal to the size of objects it's interacting with or going through, what it will do is it will do uh, diffraction. It will sort of spread out around them. If you have a wavelength, say, this far apart, and it hits an object of a similar sort of size to it, let's imagine, say, a, 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 I don't know, a, a, smart, a small bone, the waves are likely to spread around it rather than bounce off it. Yes, yeah, some will bounce off it, but it won't be particularly clear. Whereas if your object is huge and you've got uh, waves much, much smaller than this, you'll find that those waves will bounce off it rather than actually uh, diffract around it. So the answer there is uh, by having a very short wavelength, you will reduce diffraction effects and increase the sharpness and resolution of the image. The graphs show uh, how particle displacement y varies with position x along a wave and time respectively. So these graphs look similar, but notice that this is a distance. This is a distance and this is a time. Yes, they've got displacement. This is the displacement there. 
okay how far it is uh, has moved from its uh, rest point but they are measuring different things one's wavelength and one is uh, time so one's measuring length so in order to determine the wavelength we're going to use this one here now you could say measure say from this peak here to this peak here and if you did that you may get the answer about eight but it's best to measure across as many waves as possible so my advice would be to go from here do one wavelength and then another wavelength which if you notice in this case it's about 17 millimeters so you write down uh, 17 millimeters but you know it's two wavelengths so you divide it by two and that will give you an answer of 8.5 millimeters and that would be an acceptable mark the frequency of the wavelength, well, frequency, you, you have to use time for that because frequency equals 1 over the time period. Now, the time period is the time for one complete oscillation, so that's from here to there. So if I measure that distance from here all the way to there, okay, there to there, that is 25 uh, milliseconds. So I'm going to end up with uh, frequency equals uh, 1 over 25 so not milliseconds microseconds so micro is times 10 to the minus 6 okay 10 to the minus 6 and when I put that into my calculator I get the answer of 40,000 Hertz so that's my frequency okay and this of course is my wavelength so I, yeah you know what I have a feeling that yeah, this is gonna be about the speed there we go velocity equals frequency times wavelength your frequency we just calculated is 40,000 so that's 4 0 0 0 0 the uh, the wavelength is 8.5 millimeters so I'm gonna write down 8.5 but of course you have to measure wavelength in meters so since it's millimeters write down times 10 to the minus 3 and when you put that inside your calculator you get the answer 340 uh, meters per second check does that seem a reasonable figure well yes it does because that is the speed of sound in air or in a vacuum